Nerfal here and in this video I am going to be jumping into WoW and giving you the top 10 beginner tips for World of Warcraft in 2022. Once I max my character to level 60 and I've grinded for quite a while, I get bored and I restart. So I'm quite familiar with the things that are involved in leveling and how to make it an easy experience. This guide is for beginners. So people that have probably only played WoW a little bit and they don't really understand what to do or people that have never played the game before so if you're a more experienced player I would say that this video is not for you although you might learn a thing or two so you might want to stick around as well so the very first tip that I'm going to give you is adjust your settings so when you first join the game you want to adjust the settings because the default settings are kind of ridiculous and not really made for gameplay. So once you're in the game, you want to hit escape and go to interface because your interface is your UI. So your user interface is everything that's around the screen. So it's the map, these options, your hotbar, the chat, everything like that. That's your interface. And the default interface is terrible. So we're going to want to adjust a few things. So the first thing you want to do is go to controls and turn on auto loot. What auto loot does is when you kill a mob and you click on them, it automatically loots everything that the mob had. If you don't turn this on, you literally have to right click every single piece of loot that the mob has dropped and it is very tedious and ridiculous. So turn on auto loot to begin with. And then the next thing you're going to want to go into is action bars. So action bars are your hot bars where all your skills and items and things will be. And what you want to do is turn on bottom left bar, bottom right bar, right bar, right bar two, and stack right bars vertically. Always show action bars and show numbers for cooldowns. You want to put everything on. So as you can see, I now have an extra hot bar down here and I have hot bars on the side. This is very helpful um, to have this extra hot bar to the right because I put like my items there and skills that I don't use regularly. And then I put more of my aggressive skills over here. This is a very new character. It's only level 22. I think I only played for less than an hour. So there are a lot of other settings that you might want to go through and make sure that it is suitable for your type of gameplay. For example, your mouse sensitivity in your system settings, you have your sound, your quality, your graphics, everything like that. So my graphics quality is on max, but Obviously, if you have an older computer or something like that, you might want to turn it down just so you don't experience lag or anything like that. And you want to adjust your window size. But the main things are the gameplay settings, because I think they're the most important, which are your interface settings. So, you know, your hot bars and your auto loot. So that is my first tip for beginners. The second thing you want to do as a beginner in WoW is set your capital city as you're in. For Horde, this would be Orgrimmar, and for Alliance, this would be in Stormwind City. So because I'm a Horde member, I'm obviously in Orgrimmar right now, and it's quite busy as you can see. And what you're gonna wanna do is find the inn that is closest to the central region because what this does is throughout your gameplay you will get a hearthstone and mine is a special easter hearthstone that i got during the easter event uh, so you won't have this one you'll have a normal one so what this hearthstone does is it allows you to teleport to the inn that you have set with a 30 minute cooldown that means during your gameplay every 30 minutes you could teleport back to your capital city and this is very important because there are things here that you can't usually access within your leveling zones in your expansions so for example i'm leveling in the legion expansion and in dalaran the main 
main city, there is no auction house. So I have to teleport back to Orgrimmar every time I want to sell something. And you also have profession trainers here. You can learn your mount speed and flight if you get to that level. So it is just a great idea to set this as your inn as soon as possible. So you can always easily find a way back here. So in Orgrimmar, I am in the Valley of Strength. And as you can see, here is the auction house over here. Then right here is the inn. So if you're a horde, you want to come to this inn next to the auction house and make this in your home. Except. So that means every time you click your hearthstone, you are going to teleport back to this area and then you have easy access to everything, which the main thing in early game as you're leveling is the auction house. That's the way you're going to make money, but I will cover that further in the video. So yes, that is my second tip. And I think it's one of the most important things that you should do as a beginner in WoW. My third tip is to learn a profession straight away. So the second you get into the game, you want to learn a profession. Don't start leveling without one. And I will explain why in a second. So if you're in Orgrimmar, for example, and you don't know how to get to the profession trainers or what profession you want to learn, the first thing you can do is go to the Orgrimmar grunt. What they do is they direct you around Orgrimmar. So once you click them and you could choose, for example, I want the auction house and then I want it in the Valley of Strength because that's where I am. And what they do is they give you some directions, but they're silly, don't read them. Uh, it will put a flag on your map and it will direct you to the auction house. So this is a great way to find the profession trainers that you are going to need early game. I am going to explain professions a little bit. So what professions are, are easy ways to make money in early game. <laughs> and that is blatantly put, but they are. So for example, a profession might be herbalism. And what herbalism does is it gives you the ability to gather herbs as you're going around the city. You can then couple this with a, another profession, for example, alchemy, and use the herbs that you gather around when you're leveling to make potions in alchemy and level your alchemy that way. And then you can sell these potions on the auction house. Or if you don't want to bother with alchemy, you can sell the herbs on the auction house to make money in early game. I am going to put on the screen the professions that are best coupled together. So in my example, I used herbalism and alchemy. In herbalism, you collect herbs and you use those herbs to make potions in alchemy. So that's what I mean by professions that are coupled together or complement each other. So I'll put those on the screen and you want to choose two that go together well. Or if you don't want to, if you want to be a rebel, you can do that too, that's fine. But I highly suggest getting ones that are coupled together because for example, you can get mining and then you can collect all the ores as as you level and then use those ores in blacksmithing to make gear and then sell that gear. It is so easy to collect things as you go around the world. So I'm leveling in Legion right now and I have skinning and every time I kill a mob that can be skinned, I collect the skin and I can use that skin uh, to craft things or I can sell the skin on the auction house. So another thing I want to mention is the fact that Professions are quite complex in that I mean every expansion has a different form of that profession. So I'll give you an example. So we're in Orgrimmar and I've just started and I don't have a profession. So what I'm going to do is go to the Orgrimmar Grunt. I am going to go to Profession Trainer and I am going to choose Skinning, the one I currently have. Now I've chosen that. It shows me on the map that Skinning is here. So I am going to run there. I have followed the map and now I am in the place that the Orgrimmar Grunt sent me. And right here is the Skinning Trainer. And so once you click on the trainer, you will be able to click this and learn skinning cataclysm skinning you don't want to learn because like i said there is a different type of skinning for every expansion so cataclysm skinning is for base game only so that is if you choose to level your skinning in the outer worlds and by that i mean kalimdor for horde or Eastern Kingdoms for Alliance. A lot of people don't do that nowadays because that was the original expansion or base game as I call it. And a lot of people choose to level in different special expansions like Pandaria, Legion, everything like that. Or if you were first 
starting and creating your first ever character, you are going to be in the expansion Battle for Azeroth because that is the first expansion that they put you in when you first start. It is a very fun expansion. I hope you enjoy it. It is in Zandala. So you are going to be in Zoldazar in the base town. And obviously I haven't played that on this character because I'm leveling in Legion. So I will explain to you now what I mean by expansion specific professions. For example, I'm leveling in Legion. I had to learn Legion skinning. That is because this gives you the ability to skin mobs in the Legion expansion. So if you just learn the base game one, you are not going to be able to skin mobs in Legion. What you want to do is learn Legion skinning. Every expansion hub, you know, the capital city in that expansion has a trainer that you can learn the specific profession from for that expansion. So for example, in Battle for Azeroth, if you wanted to learn herbalism as your profession, there will be specific Battle for Azeroth trainers in the main area. For Alliance, it is called Kul Tiran Herbalism, but for Horde, it is called Zandalari Herbalism. And for Alliance, you are going to learn this specific herbalism from Declan Sinal, or in Horde, you're going to learn this from Jaden Fla. It is going to be specific to the expansion, and that is what I mean. So in order for you to find exactly what type of profession you need in that expansion, I would suggest Googling it and then Googling which profession trainer you need to go to in that area. That is my third tip for beginners in WoW. And once you get to level 50, I have made some videos on certain Shadowlands professions and how to max them out if you want to check them out. This is a good time for me to show you what the Hearthstone does. Look, I have this very cute one from the Easter event, which actually is on right now. So go get your cute Hearthstone. So it's gonna take me back to the inn in Orgrimmar, see? And then there's a 30 minute cooldown. My fourth tip is to save all crafting regents that you pick up. So a crafting regent, if you look in your inventory, it is in blue writing on the item. You want to save every single one of those that you pick up. I put them in a separate backpack so I don't sell them. You can literally sell every other item unless it is something very special, but keep the crafting regents. The reason I suggest this is because in early game, this is a really good way to make money. So you can go to the auctioneer, which is very busy at the moment. You can go to sell and then drag your crafting regent into the box and you can see here that I have 10 stonehide leather. They're only worth 96 silver each. But if I sell them all, I will get 10 gold. So it's easy money. And you are going to get many, many crafting regents. Certain crafting regents are worth keeping and certain crafting regents aren't. If you are a right in the beginning, what you can do is go to the auctioneer and drag them in and see if they're worth keeping. If they're worth like 10 to 40 silver each, I wouldn't say they're worth keeping, but it's up to you. If you want to sell them for extra gold, that's fine. I will cover later in the video an add-on that I suggest having that will give you the ability to see how much crafting regents are worth from your inventory. Then you can decide whether or not to keep them. As you can see here, where it says sell price as 10, that does not mean the auction house. That means to an NPC, so a general goods store or a blacksmith or something like that. So don't go off of that price because people in the game buy things for more. If you keep watching, you'll be able to see the add-on that I suggest that will give you the ability to see how much things are worth. Then as you're questing, you can simply sell the things that aren't worth keeping to the NPC and free up your inventory rather than you having to teleport to Orgrimmar, go to the auctioneer, see if it's worth it, and then sell the ones that aren't. The add-on is very helpful. My fifth tip for beginners in WoW is to organize your bags as much as you can. And obviously when you first joined, you're going to have very little bag space and you're also going to have not very many bags. So what I like to do is put my crafting regents in uh, one of the little bags. So this large red sack, it came with 
the character when I first made it. So I put all my crafting regents in there. And then later on, when you get another little bag, you might put all your potions and separate your hearthstones into that bag as well. And then just have a bag for crafting regents. What I would suggest is once you have some money that you've made from selling gear, selling crafting regents, selling useless materials, you want to come to the auctioneer and buy a hex weave bag. So a hex weave bag is this one. It has a lot of bag space and we will have a look now how much they're worth. A hundred gold. You can get a hex weave bag for a hundred gold and look how much bag space it will give you. So I highly suggest when you have some money, see I have 358, that you come here and you buy a hex weave bag. I could buy several of them, but I don't feel like I need that bag space right now. There is nothing worse than you being out in the world questing, grinding, and filling up your whole inventory and not being able to pick up anything else because you want to sell that to the general goods or the blacksmith in the closest town. So I suggest organizing your bags as soon as you can so you don't get confused. Tip number six is to get add-ons that are essential for early game gameplay. So in order to get your add-ons, you want to download CurseForge. I will put a link in the description where to download this, but this is just the program that adds add-ons to your game easily. So once you're in CurseForge, you want to go down the side to World of Warcraft. The first add-on I am going to suggest is Auctionator. This is the add-on that tells you exactly how much items are worth without you having to go to the auction house. So I am going to install that one. And then the other one you want to get is TomTom. Tom. This will give you coordinates in game. The reason this is important is not because you're going to be using coordinates in game. You're not really going to reference things via coordinates if you're playing on your own. The reason I suggest this is because if you search anything on Google, if you search, you know, where is the herbalism trainer in Dalaran or something like that, they are going to give you coordinates. So if you need help with a quest, like, I can't find so-and-so in this quest, they are going to give you coordinates. So when you're searching things early game, and you'll be doing that quite a lot because the terrain does get quite confusing when you're a new player, you are going to need a way to find coordinates, which is through this add-on. So I highly suggest getting that as well. And now we will jump in game and I will show you exactly what these add-ons do. As you can see, I've logged in the game and the first noticeable thing is that the coordinates are here. And not only do they match the style of World of Warcraft, but they are incredibly accurate. So you want to grab these and just move them somewhere convenient. I'll put them in the top corner. And as you walk around, the coordinates change. And that is going to be very helpful when you're trying to locate things that have been written online, if you're having trouble in a quest or something like that. The next thing I'm going to do is show you the Auctionator add-on. You can see here that there is an extra tab called Auctionator Cancel and selling. We're not worried about those right now because we're in early game and we're just concerned with questing. As you can see in my inventory now, it says stone hide leather. The vendor will buy it. The vendor is an NPC. will buy it for one, but the auction house will buy it for 96 silver. And if we drag it over, you could see it is worth 96 silver. So now when you're out questing, you could see if something's worth keeping. Lean shank is worth 24 silver. I'll probably sell that. So I'll bring it back down here to my sell square. And uh, I will sell that out when I'm questing again because I don't think it's worth it. Tip number seven is to compare your gear. As you are questing, you are going to pick up a lot of armor, weapons, accessories, everything. You need to know, is the item that I picked up from this quest better than the item I already have on? And it is very easy to determine that. Currently, I only have a skinny knife in my inventory, but let's see if it's better than my current weapon, which I really hope it's not. You want to hover over the item that you're interested in and then hold shift. And what this does is it compares that item to the same type of item that you currently have 
equipped. So as you could see, if I put the skinning knife on, I would lose one damage per second, 19 intellect, five stamina, six haste, and three mastery. So obviously the skinning knife is not better than my current weapon. And you can do this for any item that you have in your inventory. So as you're questing and you're looting a bunch of different items, simply hold shift, see if it's better, and then if not, sell it to the general goods or the blacksmith or anything like that in the main towns. An issue you will commonly come across is the fact that the items have very similar stat levels, but they favor different types of stats. So for example, the skinning knife might give me an extra 19 stamina, but take 19 intellect. And then you think, well, which one do I pick then? What you want to do is come over to attributes. So you can open this menu with C and read what those stats do. So intellect increases the magnitude of your spells for a warlock, by the way. Stamina increases health and armor increases physical damage reduction. So not magical damage reduction, only physical. What you want to do is come over here and see what type of stats you want for your gameplay. Don't depend on on, you know, there's builds out there that are like, do this, this, and this, this is important, this is important. No, it depends on how you want to play and what you want to do with your character and how you want to build yourself up. So if you favor the strength of your spells over your armor, that's fine, favor intellect. If you favor your defense over your attack, that's fine, favor your armor level. And things like that, like your critical strike, haste mastery. Just read through all the enhancements and the attributes and decide what you think is more important for the way you want to play your character and choose your items accordingly with that decision that you've made. Tip number eight is very important. It is to unlock every flight station as you go. So I am going to teleport to Dalaran and I'm going to show you what I mean by unlocking every flight station. So currently I am in Dalaran and I chose to start questing in Valshara because I think it's the prettiest part of Legion. So I wanted to quest there. And by that, I mean the blood sucking plants are really cool. Uh, I wouldn't call it pretty, but as you can see, I've explored some of it trying to get to level 22. And what I'm going to do is use the flight master in Dalaran to get to Valshara, which is my current questing zone. On the map, the flight stations are denoted by these little boots with wings. As you can see, there's four in my area and I have unlocked all of them. What that means is I am now able to quickly fly between each of these stations by going to a flight master. So if I click this flight master and see these lines, I can fly to here, I can fly to here, I can fly to here. It costs a small amount of gold, but that's fine. It's usually never a concern. As you can see on the map, there are more flight stations, but I have not unlocked these, so I can't fly to them. And what you wanna do is as you're running along, every single time you come close to a flight station, go the extra mile mile to get to it and unlock it so that you can teleport there later. I will show you what I mean as in you can see in Surama there's a flight station just down this road. I am going to run there real quick. So I've run down here and as you can see on the map I'm nearing the flight station which is right here and you can tell whether you've unlocked one by whether or not there is a green exclamation point on top. So that means I haven't unlocked this flight station. So you click on it and you've unlocked it. And now you can travel between this point and the other points you've unlocked. Now you can see I've unlocked this flight station and you wanna get to a point where there are these little boots all over the map because then you'll be able to go wherever you want, whenever you want. Number nine is to know your role. And I say that loosely because your role is whatever the hell you want it to be, but also it's kind of not. In the game, there are three types of roles. There is a tank, DPS, and support. So what the tank does is their role is to pull all the mobs and take all the damage. The support role is to heal everyone and keep everyone alive and revive people if they die. And the DPS role is to just sit back and do damage over time. So DPS stands for damage per second. So their role is to stay out of the way of the tank and not pull mobs 
from the tank because then the tank will get angry. You might think I'm joking, but if you go into a dungeon early game, there is a good chance that you won't know what your role is. And if you play it wrong, then the other people are going to get angry because a lot of this game is filled with veterans and I guess noobs aren't really welcome most of the time. I know when I first started, I was a DPS and I aggroed a mob with one of my skills and I got absolutely blasted by the whole dungeon. Uh, all the people in the dungeon like, wow, you don't know what you're doing. Of course I don't know what I'm doing. I started playing the game like five minutes ago. Another time I died and everyone just kept running and left me behind and I had no idea where I was going or what I was doing and I didn't understand anything because I was new and they just left me at the start of the dungeon and forgot about me. It is very unforgiving to do dungeons and things like that early game. So the most important thing is for you to know your role. So you need to know whether you're a tank, whether you're a support or whether you're a DPS. And I highly suggest not playing a tank or a support when you're first starting because your role is considerably more important than a DPS. So there are several DPSs in, in an instance. There's usually one tank, one support, and the rest a DPS. So you could get away with more things, more mistakes if you're a DPS. If you're a tank, you need to do your role exactly right. If you're a support, you need to keep everyone alive or you're gonna get yelled at. So the way you find this out is through research. Or once you create a character, I'm a warlock, you could see here, these are the different types of specializations that I can choose. You could see that it says damage, damage, damage. So I am a purely DPS character. I cannot support because I have no healing skills and I cannot tank because my defense is disgusting. The only thing that can tank is my little Hathgorg dude. Um, but that's not useful in an instance. So my number one suggestion is to do some research about the character you're playing. Do some research about your specialization and find out what your role is before you do anything that involves other people because they are unforgiving and that is just a harsh truth. And that brings me to tip number 10 for beginners in WoW in 2022. And that is don't listen to anyone else. And that carries on from number nine because people are going to say things to you if you're new. As I said, most of the game is filled with veterans and they assume everyone knows what they're doing, which is not the truth. New people start playing WoW every day. You can't listen to what people say if they're belittling you or bullying you in an instance or something like that, because that can't deter you from enjoying a game that you have paid for and that you're set out to enjoy. Just block out everyone and do whatever the hell you want because that's the whole point of a game is enjoying it. It's not about stress. It's not about being bullied. It's about having fun and playing the way you want to play. If by all means you want to be a massive social player, you know, join a guild, do a lot of dungeons, a lot of raids, then you are going to have to go through the harsh truth of not knowing what you're doing to begin with. You can do some research on how to play your character better or how your character is meant to act in an instance or dungeon or anything like that. But my main takeaway from this whole video is focus on yourself. You are a beginner. Everyone has been a beginner at some point. A lot of people forget the fact that they have been a beginner, but that is just how the world works. And I'm sure you're all aware of that. So that is my very informative video on the top 10 beginner tips for WoW in 2022. If you follow these tips, you will be able to max out. It's basically everything you need to be able to quest comfortably. Obviously there are a lot of other things like knowing your way around and knowing what people to go to for what things and everything like that. But it will just come to you. If you have this basic foundation, you will be able to learn how to play the game. Just please try to follow the advice that I've given you. And if you've enjoyed the video, of course, please subscribe, leave a like, a comment, any questions or anything. I am very active on this channel as it is brand new and I'm just trying to help everyone out because I know what it's like to not know what you're doing and not be able to find any good guides out there. So thank you for watching and have an amazing day.